All right, Peach fam, today, during the talk, Daily Talks, actually during this week, we're going to be dealing with this problem of the toxins in our environment, like fluoride and other stuff. So we're going to be talking about a myriad of things in this week. So um, we're going to start talking about fermentation and the tools that you need. You know what I'm saying? We're going to talk about the toothpaste and the tools that you need, and we're going to make our own toothpaste. Um, I'm even going to get into showing you how to uh, pickle or ferment other substances so that you can help your microbiome, right? So make sure that you tune in. Peace. If you if you look into your if you look to my right, you see cabbage, and we are going to be filming a lot today because you already know that I'm gonna fast. I don't even know how I'm gonna be feeling in the next couple of days, so I have to do some stuff in advance, and I gotta get the kitchen cleaned out. So I need to do all this today. So this week we're gonna be talking about we're gonna be talking about how to feed our microbiome a little bit deeper. We're going deeper with it, right? I'm going to teach you how to do some of your own fermented food, right? So I'm going to make a dish. Um, tomorrow we're going to focus on cabbage, yams, potatoes, onions. Um, you know what I'm saying? So we're going to break down the foods. We're going to break down what happens to them when um, they're fermented. So we're going to look at the health benefits of the cabbage tomorrow. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be cutting up this old cabbage. Um, y'all, y'all get y'all get some footage of me because it's an old cabbage. So I want to show you how to how to use some of the old food in your kitchen and bring it back to life. We're gonna be talking about the true transform transformative power of fermenting foods and the importance of eating fermented foods. So what we're gonna talk about today specifically is fermented foods. Right now, also during the week, we're gonna be talking about Making your own toothpaste, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you how to make it because I'm almost out of mind. Um, we're going to make our own toothpaste. Um, we're going to talk about uh, uh, beets because um, we're going to ferment some beets as well. Um, we're going to talk about the cabbage. We're going to ferment cabbage as well. Um, we're also going to be talking about um, dealing with some, some impotence issues, all right? How by you know with the, I mean just just by in by engulfing yourself in this Nguza Saba challenge, right? You're gonna take care of a lot of those issues, but how do you keep it working as a man? And you know what I'm saying, and even in some cases a female. We're gonna talk about the pelvic floor, how to, how to use that, and we're gonna talk about sex, but also we're gonna look at the positive benefits of sex. But then we also gonna look at some of the what I believe is some of the erroneous information out there about sex, especially that we was taught as young men, because many, as far as in my boat, 
Many of the young men that I were around, we didn't have adults talking to us about sex. We learned about sex from other young people. Right? So we don't understand the importance of sexual energy. So we're going to be talking about sexual energy, how to harness it, because that's a powerful part of your ashe. Because a large portion of your ashe energy that you're breathing in, the food that you eat, the water that you drink, a large proportion of that is going towards the sexual drive. Right? So we want to, you know, I'm listen, I'm trying to cover it. I'm trying to get it all in. Why I'm still on this fast. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how the week is going to go. We're going to push through. Right? We're going to push through and do the best that we can. Right? Now, so, I'm talking about fermented foods because when I come off my fast, the thing that I'm going to crack open first is the fermented food. And I want to be able to share that with you. Do you understand? I want to be able to share that with you. Right? So, I'm going to pickle... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ferment some cabbage. I'm going to make like a cab like the cabbage and potatoes, right? Two, two types of potatoes with onions, right? And then I'm also going to ferment some beets, right? As well as have some beet greens in there with them too. You know, greens don't do that well over a long period of time. So I'm going I'm gonna put some of those beet greens to the side and keep them so that I can steam them have them with some um, wild rice brown rice or uh, some quinoa you know what I'm saying because you know we're gonna talk about them them beet greens you know we we don't have to get into those if we talk about the beet because a lot of us are missing a lot of the nutrients right one of the things I used to put, put in my beet drink uh, it wasn't that popular so I really didn't make it and then it's pretty labor intensive it's, it, you know because them beets is hard to grind up right but one of the major ingredients was that I will put the beet greens in there as well, right? We missing out on them beet greens. Family, you need to take those beet greens and you need to start mixing them in with those collards. Um, you need to mix them in with that cabbage. You need, to, uh, as a matter of fact, I think I'm going to put some beet greens in with the cabbage. Thank you. All right. So let's talk about the for a minute, right? So, of course, we're going to our sites. Now, I need y'all to understand, I'm researching I'm learning just like y'all. The only difference between me and a lot of y'all is that I get up and I do this shit. I read about it. I say, wow, okay, let me experiment with this, right? I start finding out about the microbiome. It's like a garden, shit. I'm trying to find the right fertilizer to get my microbiome charged up so that I could do the shit that I want to do, right? Like I said, it's a myth that we have to get old and become decrepit and become a uh, 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 weight on our family that is a myth that is a myth we could go out of here in style family listen to me we go out of here in style and we be able to share our wisdom you know what i'm saying because the worst part about it is losing your mind as you get old because you're dealing with the pain you're dealing with the aches you know what i'm saying you start to lose your mind then on top of that you start forgetting right what if you can extend your life uh, and live a healthy extra 50 years, extra 20, extra 10, and able to give the wisdom to your children that you didn't have. Give the guidance with the foresight where you are able to step back as an elder because this is what elders are supposed to do. We're supposed to be back. When you become an elder, you're supposed to be able to step back and look at the world and say, damn, I recognize this pattern. Come here, baby. Let me tell you. Boom, 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 boom. Right, that's what it's about. Right, this is the. I mean, cause, I mean, really, this is this is where we missing out on, right? Because our elders had it hard, family. Now, and we, a lot of us came up hard. So, how do we move the next generation into wealth? We move them to gen. We move them into wealth by giving them access to wisdom that other people don't have. Not just information. See, they say information is power. Right, actually, it gives you access to power, and that's true. But what is wisdom? Wisdom is the key to thriving. Wisdom is being able to recognize those patterns in the overall system and be able to pick them out and be able to take advantage of them. Right? Y'all know the housing crisis, the same shit, the how that shit is coming back. I can't wait. 
I can't wait because we're going to be able to tell our kids when to get in and when to get out. How to take advantage of it, how not. You know what I'm saying? I can't wait for some of the the, 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 the crashes to come because it's nothing but cycles, right? If you look and you listen to a lot of the um, professionals on TV talking about the the stock market and all, all this shit is, is based on cycles, systematic processes. Isn't that what I said we need to tune into? So let's get to this fermentation, right? Right now, I'm on Wellness Mama, and there's the health benefits of fermented food. So she talks about her experience and how at first she was like, uh-uh, I'm not eating no fermented foods, family. Like a lot of you. A lot of you out there is like, some of y'all can't even think about the last time you had fermented food. And the reason I'm going to show you how to do fermented food, because a lot of the, the so-called fermented foods that you get in these grocery stores are not fermented. They're not fermented. What do you mean? All right. They have been. But what has happened, they have become pasteurized. They're pasteurized. Which means they kill, they kill all of the bacteria and stuff that you need, family. I, I need y'all to understand. You don't just eat fermented food for the taste. You eat it because it, it introduces healthy probiotics into your system. Even a lot of the yogurt that we're eating is super sugar laden. It's basically ice cream. It's, it's the same as ice cream. You know what I'm saying? You need to go to some of these health food stores and get live cultures, right? Get 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 get, get real yogurt. Because once you start throwing all that sugar and shit in there, it becomes it becomes. It, you might as well put it. You might as well use it as dessert. Really, use it as dessert. Isn't you know what I'm saying? Because one, you introducing sugar back into your system, and we know what sugar does. Most of the diseases feed on sugar. Because it's the simplest one to break down, right? But when you start getting into your culturally based diet, right, and start eating in a culturally based way, your body has developed a certain arrangement with nature. When you eat in a certain way, you are able to live in a certain way. When you break the agreement, you start falling off. All right, so now, first, she answered the question, what are fermented foods? Fermented foods are foods that have been through a process of lacto-fermentation in which natural bacteria feed on the sugar and starch in the food, not added sugar, in the food, creating lactic acid. This process preserves the food and creates beneficial enzymes, B vitamins, omega-3 fatty acids, and various strains of probiotics. Natural fermentation of food has also been shown to preserve nutrients in food and break the food down to a more digestible form. So now you understand why I'm going to break my fast for the first couple of days eating some fermented foods. Of course, y'all know I'm going to I'm, 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 I'm be quiet. Um, break down the food to a more digestible form. This along with a BV of... Uh, uh, a bevy of probiotics created during the fermentation process could explain the link between consumption of fermented foods and improved digestion. Cultures around the world have been eating fermented food for years, from sauerkraut in Germany to kimchi in Korea and everywhere in between. Study has even shown the link between probiotic rich foods and overall health. Sadly, with the advance in technology, and food preparations, these time-honored tradition, traditional foods have been largely lost in our society. Where have all the fermented food gone? Great question. The amount of probiotics and enzymes available in the average diet has declined sharply over the last few decades. As pasteurized milk has replaced raw, pasteurized yogurt has replaced homemade, vinegar-based pickles, and sauerkraut have replaced traditional lacto-fermented versions. The list goes on. They don't want you. Why? Because if you are healthy, you don't pay into the system in the way that you need to. Family, don't you realize that a major portion of your wealth being destroyed comes with you trying to maintain your health? Huh? Come on now. I want y'all to think about that. This business. It ain't personal. Don't take it personal. 
See, a lot of us, we get caught up in the conspiracy theories and we think it's personal. It's not personal, it's business. So we need to go and handle business, right? Even the much dreaded grains were safer to eat in earlier times since their preparation included soaking, sprouting, and fermenting, which largely reduced the anti-nutrient content and makes them less harmful, right? That's harmful, right? Instead of the nutrient-rich food, rich, rich food, foods full of enzymes and probiotics that our grandparents probably ate, the average diet today consists mainly of sugar-laden, lab-created dead foods. Now, one of the one of the one of the things that made this possible is the refrigerator, right? We don't need to. We don't need to. We don't need to pickle food. We don't need to preserve it because all we gotta do is put it in the refrigerator. And we think that we're benefiting ourselves, right? But by us removing this stuff from our diet, we are actually exposing ourselves to the dangers of the toxins in the world, right? Fermented foods, first off, give your body a break. Like, I'm going to do it when I come off my fat because a lot of the food is pre-digested, Right? My body don't have to work as hard. And because I because I haven't been eating for over, right now it's 14 days. If I go all the way through the fast, it'll be 21 days. I want my, I want my digestive system to take it easy. But also, along with the probiotics that come with this, I also want those lacto-based probiotics that are produced by the foods in them. And I also want... Uh, uh, a quick and easier um, access to the nutrients that are available in them. Why eat fermented foods? Besides the facts that they taste great and, and really grow on you, there are several great reasons to start making and eating fermented foods. Probiotics. One, eating fermented foods and drinking fermented drinks like kefir or that ambrosia. Labeled as a kombucha will introduce beneficial bacteria into your digestive system and help the balance of the bacteria in your digestive system. Probiotics have also been shown to help slow or reverse some diseases, improve bowel movements, aid digestions, and improve immunity. And let's don't forget about helping you in the bedroom. Alright? Absorb food better. Having a proper balance of gut bacteria and enough digestive enzymes help you absorb more of the nutrients in the food you eat. See, a lot of us think that all the digestion goes on in the stomach, right? But it's, it's system-wide, right? Now, the stomach breaks it down, but then you also got bacteria and yeast that assist the stomach with this. And then you have bacteria and yeast that exist, that, that assist with the distribution. And then you also have bacteria and yeast that are involved in defending your body, right? Then you have bacteria and yeast that also help cleanse your mind. And some of them are controlling your mind. But that's all. We already talked about that, right? Having a proper um, balance of gut bacteria and enough digestive enzymes help you absorb more of the nutrients of the food you eat. Pair this with your healthy, real food diet. And you absorb many more nutrients from the food you eat. You won't need as many supplements and vitamins. And you'll be absorbing more of the live nutrients in your food. Budget friendly. Incorporating healthy foods into your diet can, be, can get expensive. But not so with fermented foods. You can make your own way at home for a couple of dollars. And using the sea salt fermented foods are very... Um, you can ferment many foods very inexpensively. Drink like um, drinks like water kefir and kombucha can be made at home also and cost only pennies per serving. Adding these things to your diet can also cut down on the number of supplements you need, helping the budget further. Prefer preserve food more easily. Homemade salsa only lasts a few days in the fridge. Fermented homemade salsas last months. The same goes for sauerkraut, pickles, beets, and other garden foods. Lacto-fermentations allow you to store these foods for longer periods of time without losing the nutrients like you would in traditional canning. 
bring on the bacteria how to incorporate a four minute food so we're going we're going to move to that article let's go to another article let's see this is from a site called basicgrowth.com ooh that's that's for a later date we're going to keep that one all right cool so uh, oh here we go green info healing I was on I was on a, another day amazing healing properties of fermented food now this is a, a great site green med info um, I was I, I would suggest getting the newsletter because they really break down some stuff and they have a lot of research to back up some of the stuff so between the hard and fast dichotomies of cooked and raw dead and live is this beautiful thing called fermented a place where many of the digestive challenges associated with raw foods enzymes inhibitors anti-nutrients and lectins all become in favor of not just preserving their benefits enzymes activity vitamins content life energy but amplifying them also overcome are the adverse consequences of cooking enzyme destruction vitamin activity degradation oxide ox oxidized fats denature proteins etc while still benefiting from the enhanced digestibility and assimilation that certain cooking applications offer from fermented foods in many ways the complementary union of food of cooked and raw as well as their transcendence an image not unlike the Tai Chi or the um, um, the Dao symbol, the yin yang symbol, y'all. In fact, fermentation has almost heretically heretical powers in the realm of both medicine and nutrition, being quite capable of literally raising the dead, which I'm gonna do with this cabbage, as well as revitalizing and infusing with living and breathing energy a food ingredient that has been cooked into oblivion or human whose body has been poisoned close to the point of death without antibiotics or similar biological drugs or chemicals. There is no lack of scientific confirmation for the indisputed value of fermented foods for the promotion of health and well-being. In fact, one could consider fermented foods like kimchi, natto, apple cider vinegar, and even in moderation wine, coffee, chocolate, and beer. All those are fermented. Medical foods of a sort. At Green Med, Med Info, we have been indexing these functional applications in disease prevention and treatment straight from the research house on the National Library of Medicine and have found over 140 diseases that may be prevented or ameliorated by their use. See fermented food health benefits. Now, when you click this link on this site, they take you to... Um, another part of the site where they categorize like for example when you look up fermented foods they categorize studies that have been done on fermented food they got over 140 studies but they're locked and you have to become a member so once once our membership grows here I will become a member and I'll be able to share this information with y'all because we'll be able to go a little bit more in depth right because I can find the studies but it's all compiled right here on this site alright um, Let's, let, I'm going to click on it real quick so I can show you what I'm talking about. 241 abstracts with fermented foods and beverage research. Um, free sample of member only features. Probiotic supplementation use is effective in lowering the lipid levels and coexisting factors associated with cardiovascular disease. High intake of fermented milk may reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease. Higher levels of yogurt consumption was associated with lower incidence risk of cardiovascular disease in a dose response analysis. A D3 supplemented yogurt drink improves insulin resistance and lipid profiles in women with gestational diabetes, mellitus, a fermented milk containing whey protein, prote proteins concentrate has a positive effect on serum lipids and blood pressure in rats and healthy men a fermented whey product has therapeutic value in the treatment of metabolic syndrome a high consumption of yogurt may be associated with a lower prevalence of dental care um, caries in young children a lacto probiotic product reduced up to 79.82 percent 
um, the reduction of aberrant crit foci by or foci by one to um, dimethylhydrazine, a symbiotic yogurt containing biofly bifidobacterium animals, uh, animalis. And FOS has a favorable effect on the bowel habits of women with functional constipation. A yeast-based fermentation byproduct reduced colds and flu incidence in non-vaccinated individuals. A yeast-based fermentation byproduct reduced colds and flu symptoms duration and so, um, severity. A yogurt diet may be an ideal therapeutic intervention for persistent diarrhea, acute non-inflammatory uh, non inflammatory gastritis, Improvement in accelerated is accelerated by probiotic yogurt consumption. Among patients with established heart disease, moderate consumption of wine seems to be associated with lower incidence of cardiovascular events and total mortality as a compound with non-drinkers. Wine is a fermented food, family. is a fermented drink. Beer drinking contributes to higher bone density as a result of the phytoestrogen content, hops of this alcoholic beverage. Beer, vodka, and especially red wine prevents oxygen-induced oxidative stress associated with artillery stiffness. Citrus juice fermented with lactobacillus plantarium, YIT0132, um, alleviates symptoms of perineum allergic rhinitis. Consumption of 300 um, grams day probiotic and conventional yogurt um, can play a role in proven symptoms of constipation. And it goes on and on. You got all these studies. That you could pull up if you got any um um if you got any questions. Fermented papaya, fermented wheat germ, ferment uh, frequent miso soup, and isoflavin consumption associated with a reduced risk of breast cancer. Great yogurt consumption, uh, habitual consumption of, of fermented foods. You got you got uh, over two hundred and forty one studies that you could pick from. From Green Mad Info, right? So my fault. Let me go back. I just wanted to share that with you because this is a that, an excellent article. Um, there are a broad range of fermented foods we could talk, we could look at to illustrate their power to heal. After all, every single culture on the planet used not a semantic coincidence culture culturing to sustain themselves. Now, remember, we call our cells culture when we come together and we work together when these bacteria and yeast come together they form as above so below so what we do the micro the mic the, the micro world do and what and what the stars and and the things above us are doing we're doing we organize cultures right so this is why i say culture rather than um they say uh a scoby symbiotic culture or colony i call it a culture there are a um, broad range of fermented foods we could look at to illustrate the power to heal. After all, every single culture on the planet used not a somatic coincidence, culturing to sustain themselves. Every single one. But for the short article, we will focus on Asian traditional preparation since there is already such a huge body of clinical research demonstrating their amazing health effects. Now, for those of us of African descent, one of the ways we used to ferment food is like dry fish. We also use the salt because salt was a major trading piece all over. As a matter of fact, you hear that salt in certain parts of Africa, an ounce of salt was equal to the uh, ounce of gold. Why? Because with salt, you could preserve the food. And by preserving the food, you preserved your life, right? So you got kimchi, miso, natto, uh, and they go into a lot of that stuff. But... You can read the article yourself, but I won't belabor the point now. So tomorrow, what we're going to be talking about, we're going to be looking at the healing properties and the benefits of cabbage. Um, then also, I'm going to prepare, I'm going to show you how to prepare a, a cabbage fermented stew, right? It takes seven days for it to get prepared, about seven days, you know what I'm saying? And we will check it on a daily basis as we do this because I don't want the, the, cause the jars will blow up. It's just like making that ambrosia. So I want to thank y'all for tuning in. I want to thank y'all for your patience. I want to thank y'all for your love. I want to thank y'all for your support. <laughs> Family, we are moving and it is growing and it's becoming empowered. 
Can't wait to see you tomorrow. Hope my energy is this high then. Peace. Thank you for watching the video. I want you to subscribe. Click the bird right there. The fiery bird. And I also have a special video just for you. Right there. And for those that want more information about Jamie Journey, go to our site. It should be right about there. Peace.